Good morning guys. Um, today I thought it would be fun to teach you how to draw a sloth. So I have my copy paper like I've been using and then I'm going to use a sharpie. Um, if I were you I would maybe start with a pencil um, so that you can erase anything. But I, I'm going to start with a sharpie just so you can see um, what I'm drawing. I think if I use a pencil it will be too light. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my paper um, horizontally like this and I'm going to start with the head. Now the head's going to be an oval. I'm going to put an oval right there. Notice I've got some space between the top of my paper and the side. You definitely don't want to put it too close because what we're going to do is we're going to have, here's a finished piece. piece. Um, we're going to have a little space on the side um, just for some fun decorations like flowers and leaves. Um, we're actually going to have them hanging from a little branch like they do. So you want to leave a little bit of space so you can make that happen. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the outside of his body. So I'm going to have this arm not quite go all the way to the top. Oop, hit my computer. Um, all the way down like that. And then I'm going to start kind of connecting these. So this is going to be this front paw. Kind of go over his head this way. Kind of almost like ears, but they're actually going to be the little paws. They're going to fall down around the side of his face. And then this. And you go up and over. There we go. Um, I got a little off because I hit my computer over here, but that's okay. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to give him his cute little face. So I'm going to kind of make a curved line on this side of his face. And then I'm going to do the same thing over there. And then I'm going to draw his eyes. I like to color mine in with Sharpie. I like to leave a little bit um, that is not fully colored in with my Sharpie so that it looks like those are little highlights to really make his eyes look like they're round. So the next thing I'm going to do is come in <clears throat> and I'm going to get his little nose. So I'm going to make a big oval this way and then you saw me make skinny ovals going uh, vertically instead of horizontally and now I'm just going to kind of color around them. Those are going to be like his little nostrils. And then sloths just appear to be happy all the time. So I'm going to make a nice smile on his face. So now, like we talked about, oh, i got to do the paws too. He's got long claws. I'm just going to kind of put them in here a little bit. Okay, now like I said, we want him to look like he's on a branch hanging. So I'm actually going to start the edge of my paper over here. And remember, I don't want to go on top of my paw, so I'm just going to kind of, when I get to the paw, I'm going to lift up my marker and keep going. So that's the top of my branch that I just drew here. Now I've got to draw at the bottom of my branch. And notice I'm not even trying to make the branch straight because it wouldn't be. It's actually going to have... A little bit of texture to it. So we do um, branches quite a bit in class and we know that they are rough and scratchy and bumpy and if you wanted to have like some you know actual smaller branches coming off you could absolutely do that too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start making these leaves. So we can make whatever kind of leaves we want. Uh, this one I kind of came, curved my line and came to a point and did the same thing on the other side. And then you don't want to forget the veins. This is a really good detail to help anybody who's looking at your artwork know that it's a leaf. Not all leaves look the same. Some of them look a little different. Oh. <laughs> 
You can hear my dog dreaming over there. He's probably chasing something in his dream. So notice I went behind. I didn't draw over it because I used Sharpie, so I can't erase this line. So that's why I made it look like this leaf is going behind. Um, and then maybe I'll make another leaf or two over here. Okay, so that's how I did my leaves. Um, I'm going to show you how I did a couple of my flowers down below. And the first flower that I'm going to do, I'm going to do over here. I'm just going to start with like a nice little center. And I don't want to draw it too close because remember, my petals are going to come out. So I don't want to draw it too close to his body. So I start with just a center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come up. It's almost going to look like a heart, but not quite. I'm going to go all the way around until I come all the way around. And you can even layer it. A lot of flowers kind of have these layers to them. You want to do that? So here's one of the ways to make a flower. Here's probably my favorite flower to draw as well as to grow. So I like to do just a nice little circle. And make these little wavy lines. I just kind of connect them from one wavy line to the next. And these are like peonies. I love my peony bushes outside. I think they look really pretty. So I'm just making these little curved lines all the way around. And then when I'm done, I like to kind of swirl the middle to make it look like it goes inside too. So there's a fun one. Um, Sometimes I even like to make them look like they're kind of coming off the page. So maybe do half of a circle here. We don't see the whole flower, but we know that it's there. So, um, so that's what I want you guys to do. Just kind of have fun. And it's okay to have some leaves down here as well if you want. Uh, just kind of frame whatever we've got going on in here. Fill the space. You could do all flowers if you want. You don't even have to do leaves if you don't want to. But I really want you to fill the space. And make sure that when you make your flowers, you make it so that you can color it in. Okay? So if I draw the stems of my flowers kind of like how I did my branch. I can't just draw a single line because then you can't color in a single line. You have to kind of draw the top of the branch and then the bottom of the branch or the top of the stem, the bottom of the stem so that you could color it in. So for here, if this is my flower, I can't just have a single line coming out the bottom. I won't be able to color it in. Instead, I need to have two. So now when I go to color that, I can make sure that my stem is green and it doesn't stay black like a sharpie. So I'm going to continue making a variety of leaves and flowers. I may do a really big peony over here. And there's really no wrong way to make these guys. They're pretty easy and they always turn out really beautiful. Like I said, I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger this time. That's what's kind of fun is making a variety of flowers with a variety of sizes as well. I'm just going to kind of go off the paper there. And I don't want to go over this, so I'm just going to kind of stop there. And then remember, you got to do a little swirly in the middle. So I'm going to do some half flowers over here. Again, notice how I'm stopping when I get to my sloth because I don't want to accidentally color on top of him. This flower is actually behind him. So I want to make sure that I show that. Um, I might do one more leaf right here so that it's not... There we go. <clears throat>
Okay, and one thing that I forgot to do on my sloth is I want to create texture because sloths have lots and lots of fur. So notice I'm just kind of changing the direction of my little line. I'm going to kind of make it go around his face and then kind of follow the length of his body along his tummy and then up his legs. So there is our sloth. Now you can use whatever you want to color him in. You can use um, a combination of oil pastels or crayon and watercolor. You could use markers to color them in. You could use crayons to color them in. Um, it's completely up to you. The only thing that I want to remind you guys as you do this lesson is to add all of the details. Don't rush through it. Take your time and make sure you add these really cool details. Add the texture um, Add to, to the sloth. Add the texture to the tree. Don't forget the veins in all of your leaves. And what's really cool is when you kind of fill all the spaces too. And I didn't really overlap a whole lot with my leaves or my flowers, but I could have done that as well and it would make it really interesting. I kind of overlapped my leaf with my branch here. And then in a couple places, I kind of made sure to make it look like the flower was behind the sloth, but I didn't really do a whole lot of overlapping so that's always fun too when you overlap so remember overlapping is where it looks like you have um, part of a leaf or a flower but not the whole thing because it's being blocked or overlapped by something else covered over by something else so don't forget to add the details add a variety of flowers and sizes so remember i didn't make all of my flowers perfectly in a pattern across the bottom um, I kind of mixed and matched what I did. So when you do that, it just adds a little bit of variety to your work. So can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'm so excited. So I hope you enjoy your sloth drawings.